some things that we did this week. A quick recap of our mass band stuff. Brian showed you how to stop on the right foot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty commonplace, so we stop on the right foot. We, turn, we take off on the left foot, dress to the right, keep your lines nice and neat. We have bands like David's band, Grand Lion. They work on this stuff. They work on marching extensively. And it shows when a band comes up to the line where we're judging a band. We don't start judging until the pipe maker says, by the way, quick march. So the band gets, they get set up, and off they come. That's where we start. When they finish, we go back to our table and we start writing score sheets up. Okay? But, you know, first impressions mean a lot. And that band comes walking up, in step, looking good. I don't recommend playing up to the line with the, the pipe band. For those of you that are in, I know not most of you guys here are not, but I don't recommend marching up to the line playing because it's, something is bound to go wrong. The judge is going to have to first listen to your band, even though they're not supposed to, and that will make a first impression. But when you come up marching smartly, a day band, they've got their hands going, you know, you stop perfectly together, boy, that's a great first impression. Whether the pipes are up or down, then they go through a whole series of things to get the pipes up. Very, very smart. Doesn't take a lot to do that. They sort of have fashioned themselves after the Scots cars to some extent in the things that they do, okay? You don't have to do that. You find your own way to look smart. Make your band look good when you go out and present yourself out in public. It's very important that you look good, the uniforms look good, everybody looks and sounds the same. These are the notes, and I can give you paperwork on this. I have it with me up in the room. I would tune the drums to these notes. Then you're using your tuner. Boom, boom, boom. We have a tension meter that we can put around every one of the tension lugs on there to keep that even, keep them all even. I mean, it would make sense that, uh, like making a bed in the, in, the, uh, in the armed service, you know, they want that bed nice and tight. They don't want to see a corner. If you've got a crease going down the middle of the head because it's all out of whack and not tightened up evenly, you're going to get overtones out of the drum. You want to have a stretched membrane over the orifice as perfectly stretched as possible to get good tone out of it. Okay, so you start, and every one of those tension bolts will be the same. So you're just cranking it down until you get a note, it's inevitably going to change. So that's why I would, I would tune that stuff to. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about what we're talking about over here? If you do, just give me a hand up. Play keep a right foot right hand, which is going to be your first instinct. You're going to be like this. <laughs> boom, boom. That's exactly what you're going to feel at the first. You don't do it. You don't walk that. We walk with our left foot and our right hand. So you put it like this, and just get used to walking, and bring the stick up and hit the drum. Boom, 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 boom. If you finally find yourself in a situation like this, where you can do it with a downward stroke. Now, why would I do a downward stroke? Any orchestra. What does the guy do when he hits down? He hits a downward stroke with his baton, isn't it? It's never this. You ever see a conductor doing this with a band? <laughs> that was great. No, they do this. They come down. So this helps you conduct the band. They'll get used to seeing your arm motions on the downward motion, and there's your downbeat as you're walking. Okay? You see, most tenor drummers have what they call a standard four. Okay? Right foot. Left foot, so and so, right hand, left foot, boom, boom, boom. They'll do a standard four. So instead of just doing one, two, three, four, their real first flourish they do is something that looks like this. The right hand strike, the left hand goes out. One, left hand strike, the right hand goes out. Right hand strike, left hand comes up. Left hand strike, the right hand comes up. And it keeps going in that motion. One, two, three, four. One, it's visually appealing instead of just one. <laughs> Stamping their feet in the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice at all. But if they start doing something, and I'll tell you right now, it's kind of, well, it gets me angry, is uh, you'll be playing away, sounding great, and you'll see a tenor drummer do one or two little things, and they'll come up and they'll be watching them. <laughs> Juggling. They're doing magic tricks with sticks. It's not, they're not doing much of it. But they're adding flourishes now, too. To take up some time. These are called singles, splitting the feathers, a name for every different thing. They got all kinds of different things happening. But the first thing they're going to do is they're going to do a flourish that looks like this. With the quarter notes. The hands just simply go out, and there's an arm motion. So they got a little bit of rhythm in motion going on. If your tenor drummers are out there just poking and hoping, tell them, listen, we want to see something from you guys other than just quarter notes can be very appealing. You can add a flourish in there, you can go out, add a flourish. 
Very simple. Very hard to do that though. It's easier to get them to do two beats with one flourish. Okay? That's the first one you really do. Okay? But you say, listen, I want to see some rhythm in motion from you. I want to see rhythm in motion with your hands. I don't want <laughs> sloppy, you know, just going out there being out of step. It's very important to put this whole package together. Where did tenor drumming come from? Story, John Kerr, John Kerr, days of old, very famous drummer in Canada, played with shots. His brother Jim Kerr was the pipe major of the Worcester band, and John went to Canada. Jim came to the U.S., John went to Canada, and uh, he established drumming, uh, his own drumming style, very, very stylish guy. He went on the deep end, he put a lot of... Um, Instead of stri straight uh, dividing notes into standard patterns, he went into odd-numbered patterns and things, really wild, crazy, syncopated stuff. And uh, the, the, the uh, style didn't take off that much, but he was coming out with tom-toms and different things back in the 60s with pipe bands, adding different things. He was with the Air Force, and he was, he was very, very interesting. He always said, you've got to keep it, keep it looking good. So, but he, he, was, he was over the top with this kind of stuff that he did. But you can do this. Let me put a little spin on him. That looks quite nice. We walk down the street, it looks, it looks very nice.